Beloved, my name is Pastor Don Odunze Jr. of the Family Circle Ministries, Enugu, Nigeria. Once again, I'm sure you are very familiar with my voice now. I bring you the Word of God. And today I'll be sharing with you on what I titled, Offload Your Excess Luggage. Offload your excess luggage if you are listening to me please make out time if you are in the office don't let it distract you but give your attention also but this is a, a tip a message I will want you to listen to when you are just alone a lot of hearts are heavy a lot of hearts have been wounded you are wearing a good cloth, but your heart is bleeding. You are occupying a good office, but your heart is broken. You have a good house, but you can't sleep in it. You have a good job, but you have no peace. That is not life. Some have taken to alcohol, some have taken to womanizing. Some have taken to clubbing. Some have even taken to eating and eating and you're growing fat because your heart is troubled. I come your way to bring peace. I come your way to bring calmness. Life is not just like this. You can still be happy. What are you carrying? If you're driving the highway and the policeman stops you, he will ask you, who are you? Or where are you going to? Or he will ask you, what do you have in your boot? If it's another kind of policeman, he will ask you, waiting your carry. At the airport, they will ask you, what is in this bag? What is in this carton? What are you carrying? There's a limit to what you're permitted to carry. Anything excess, you will pay for it. That is what is happening in life. You are paying for something that is excess and you don't need it. Can you ask somebody by your side? What do you carry? What do you carry? No, I mean, touch that person. Touch Whether you're in the bus or in the car, whether you're in the parlor or in the shop or on the road, ask somebody. Now, Genikibu, what do you carry? Well, people are busy asking and asking. Nobody's answering it. But let us see what you're carrying. As I speak to you today, I bring you healing to the wounds that no drugs can address. I read from 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 19 to 22. 2 Kings chapter 2 from verse 19 to 22 And the men of the city said to Elisha Behold I pray thee The situation of this city is pleasant As my Lord see it But the water is bad and the ground is barren And he said Bring me a new cruise And put salt therein And they brought it to him and he went forth unto the spring of the waters and cast the salt in there and said, Thus said the Lord, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from thence any more death or barren land. Verse 22. So the waters were healed unto this day according to the saying of Elisha which he spake. Offload your excess luggage where we read you discover the elders of the city came to Elisha and they said master ah, this was just Elisha coming back from escorting Elijah and they called him master Elisha used to be the servant of the prophet and here now he has become a master overnight listen it does not take God two months to change your situation it will not take God three weeks to change your situation it takes God a word, just a word. 
as you hear me today a word is coming to address your situation you will not remain like this i speak life i speak healing i speak progress as a change coming your way if you believe me as a prophet of god let me hear you shout amen, amen. shout it don't mind the person by your side yes receive it it's coming your way they came to elisha and they brought a question to him and they said man of god the city as you can see is beautiful but the water you can't see under it is bad the land is barren the city is beautiful the water is bad the land is barren the city is beautiful the water is bad the land is barren that is the case of families today that is the case of businesses today that is the case of nations that is the case of countries by the grace of god i've had a little privilege of addressing some men in authority in different nations but hear me today i have come to discover that a lot of people are living a false life i read in the papers and i also heard in the news of a woman who is a bank manager in Port Harcourt city of Nigeria finished her work came back to her house beautiful house good job bank manager only to enter her bedroom put a rope on the ceiling fan and hung herself and she died she has a beautiful house she has a good job but something is wrong the city is beautiful the water is bad what on earth will make a millionaire in Onisha of Nigeria take breakfast in his house a young man with different buildings here and there go to the Niger bridge park his car drop a note and jump into the river and get drowned the city is beautiful the water is bad what is it that will make a man that is big enough to be considered a minister in a nation like Nigeria. Go to the beach in Lekki, park his car, and get drowned in the sea. We cannot understand. The city is beautiful. The water is bad. Today you see a man, he has flashy cars, he has good buildings. He wears designer dresses, but yet he cannot sleep without pills. He needs to be injected before he sleeps. He can't eat. He has a good bed, but cannot sleep on it. The city is beautiful. The water is bad. Today you see men that are gifted. Gifted stars. You see them in the Nollywood, you see them in the Hollywood, you see them in the Bollywood, you see them in the music industry. They are making money, but you come back to their life as a person, they are bleeding. Everywhere they are crying. They come out and make others happy, they go in and they are crying. Is that your case as you listen to me? You make people laugh, but you are crying in your own heart. You make things work for people, but inside you, you know things are not working. It's like a preacher who preaches, and we have a lot of pastors like that. Yet you have just blessed someone who receives a breakthrough, but your children's school fees are not paid. The city is beautiful. The water is bad. Beautiful girls in the family, none of them has a good marriage. All of them frustrated. The city is beautiful. The water is bad. They have just dedicated their house, but they are owing. It's a new car that is not being paid for. The designer dress they are wearing, they bought it when they had money, not now. Past glory is still what they are using. The city is beautiful. The water is bad. They are in government. They are moving on, powering on, making speeches, living big, but they are dying. 
Some have doctors that follow them to every trip. The city is beautiful. The water is bad. People look at you. They want to be like you. You look at yourself and you ask God, what is wrong with me? The city is beautiful. The water is bad. Is that your case? God will change it today. God will give you your true glory. God can bring you to the place where you ought to be. I speak as a man of God. I want to touch your heart where you have been wounded. Healing is coming your way. You can live above hurts. You can live above those negative feelings. You can live above depression. And then you see Elisha here. Elders of the city knew the state of the city. Forget about what you hear in the news. Something is wrong in our place. You may see good buildings. You may see good offices. You may see good adverts on television. What you see is good. But what you cannot see <laughs> is bad. Is bad. That you see them walking on the street, living, looking so good, looking lively, but they are dying inside. You come to them and say, oh boy, leave that thing on. No. Life is not the way you see it. And that is true. But listen, I bring you a message of hope. Elisha said to this man, Go and bring me two things. Bring me a new cruise and put salt in it. A new cruise is like a new container. A new container. A new vessel. A new cruise is like a new package. Bring it so that it can contain something. And they said, Put salt in it. In the land of Israel, salt is very important. In fact, in Jericho, where we were talking about, when they need money, what they do is to go by the seashore, they dig holes, and water will flow into it. After a while, the water will evaporate and disappear, and salt will accumulate, and they will go collect the salt and use it for trading. Salt. If you come to the tabernacle, the anointing oil in the tabernacle contains salt. In those days, when a new child is born, they rub salt on the body to prevent infection. When they bring meat or burnt offering, they use the salt to clean it and wash it and purify it. Salt. It's even a common practice from the days of the Bible that when someone develops a toothache, they tell him, gargle your mouth with water and salt. And the Lord in preserving the lineage of David, he said, I have decreed that the sons of David will sit upon the throne. And he said, I have established it with the covenant of salt. Jesus came up and he said, Ye are the salt of the earth. Without you, the earth has no taste. Listen as you hear me today. Salt is coming back into your life. Nobody understands your wound. Nobody understands your hurts. But listen to me. Salt is coming into your life. I am sent as a man of God to come your way. You may not see my face, but you are hearing my voice. Listen to me. You can be better than what you are. You can move further than where you are. You can get higher than where you are. It is possible for to him that believes. All things are possible possible i see you getting to another level you will not be stopped they can only delay you they cannot stop you you are rising again today and you are moving to a higher height where you have not been let me hear you shout amen amen means let it be let me hear you shout amen he said bring me a container and salt that is for the salt why the container when we talk about container, we are talking of something like a bag. And I can tell you that the heart of a man is a container. The heart of a man is like a woman's bag. You don't know what is inside it. 
Only the woman knows. And sometimes even the woman forgets what she kept inside the handbag. You don't put hands into the handbag of a woman anyhow. Otherwise, your hand will either come out bleeding or you may have touched something that you will need it all to wash your hand with. <laughs> My God. That is the way our hearts are. As you are listening to me now, different things are in your heart. Some of you are thinking of how to pay rent. Some of you are thinking of how to take your life. Some of you are thinking of what to do to someone that has committed slander, that has sland that had destroyed your name somewhere. Some of you are thinking of how to travel out and run away from this kind of place and find another place to go and stay. Some of you are thinking of how to leave your home. Some of you are thinking of how to destroy somebody else. It's possible you're even thinking of how you're going to be registered in a secret cult. Some are thinking of how they are going to die. Some have even concluded already. Some are thinking of the kind of cough, coffin or burial that they should be given. My friend, what is going on in your heart? This journey you're making, what is in your heart? What is in your heart? Yes, you're smiling, you're looking good. But what is in your heart? The Bible says God sees the heart. When he sent Samuel to anoint David king, he saw the man that was macho with big chest. And he said, ah, this is the one that can be king. God said, don't you ever try it. Don't anoint him. You look at the outward appearance, but I look at the heart. Your heart. Your heart. Your heart is a container carrying something. What are you carrying? What thing you carry? What is this heavy load that wants to put you down and you want to die overnight? What are these things in the office that is making you lose appetite? Your blood pressure is off and on. Up and off. Just like that. You're in hospital today. You're in the house tomorrow. You're in church the next day. And you can't seem to enjoy this life. How long will you go on like this? I speak peace. You have a choice. Happiness is a choice. Being happy is a choice. And being happy is not the absence of hearts. You can decide to still be happy. Even in the presence. Of attacks. Of offenses. It all depends on the state of your heart. The heart, the Bible says, out of your heart are the issues of life. What are the things coming out? And the Bible records that the water is bad. And then Elisha had to take this thing, the salt and the container. The Bible says he went to the spring. The spring means the fountain. It means the beginning from where the water started flowing. Why did he not pour it at the place where he was? He had to go straight to where it began to the fountain because between the fountain and where he was the water has been polluted what was it that polluted the water i want to look at the stones that polluted the water the pebbles the sticks it's like a river flowing and you see some people will come by the side and take their baths and they will wash all dirty things the water will carry some people will carry their dustbin and they will come and pour it the water will carry some people will come there to go and ease themselves by the side. The water will carry. What is it that you have collected in your life that has polluted the water of life that is supposed to flow through you? Can I look at some of the things I call the excess luggages? Think. Check your heart. As I speak to you in a few minutes. Hmm. Oh. Some of you are bleeding. You're even shedding tears. Don't worry. Everything that happened to you was in yesterday. Tomorrow is a better day. Let me look at the stones. The things that people have collected that has polluted their water. Those are the things I call the excess love. Excess love number one is what I call rejection. Have you seen people who are rejected? 
some when their mother got pregnant their father was not ready and they were rejected from birth have you gone to a primary school where you want to play football with your mates and they will tell you ah go and find your own team we don't want you have you ever gone to a wedding where you want to join in a photograph and they tell you wait wait eh, wait when we finish you come and take your own have you ever been in a classroom where your teacher looks at you and tells you you're good for nothing rejection have you ever been in a situation where your own husband tells you you are nonsense you are stupid i don't know the kind of mistake i made in picking you have you ever seen yourself qualified to handle a post in church in your office and they tell you to your face that you cannot have it have you ever given yourself giving your best and they reject it and they tell you sorry it's not what we want your heart is broken listen to me let no one reject you but if anyone rejects you do not reject yourself because god has not rejected you someone looked at me sometime in life when i started ministry i finished school and i met this lady in one of our family friends house and she looked at me and said hey don what are you doing now i said i finished my service i'm now in the ministry with my father and the woman looked at me and said is that one walk so you don't have anything to do you want to be following your father up and down i told i said i said to myself so my father is now walking up and down and i didn't know anything to do i didn't know how to answer this woman i was ashamed i kept quiet there are statements of life you cannot answer hear me as i speak to you time will answer it for you god will answer you you will not go down until that question is answered you will never go down i can tell you a few years later a man came to my father's office and was asking please sir pray for me my family is scattered we don't know what to do a professor that cannot boast of a one-room apartment in the house my father said go and bring your wife he brought the wife and my father told them there's a man in this ministry that god has raised with unusual powers he said he's my son and i recognize what god has deposited in him he said go to him if he prays for you this thing will be okay and they brought them to my office behold it was the same woman who asked me is that one walk and she didn't remember the husband told his story and i asked the husband do you believe that god can flow through me to solve this problem and he said yes that's why we came i asked the woman madam do you believe she said yes i said no put sir there say yes sir she said yes sir i said do you know why you told me six years ago is this one work do you remember what where you told me in somebody's house and the husband looked at her and said this your mouth this your mouth i had to tell them to kneel down and i started work on them that which was not work has become work listen i bring you hope the bible says the stone the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone i speak into your life they that rejected you today will celebrate you tomorrow let me hear you shout amen if they give up on you don't give up on yourself you are going somewhere you are only in the process don't die in your process end up in the showcase where you will be celebrated you will get there rejection what about the stone of betrayal have you been betrayed have you told yourself i don't want friends again I want to be myself have you had people that ate your food under your roof go out and be the people that destroy your name outside have you had people you helped become enemies have you had people you confided in shared your secret with and they used it to go and buy favor somewhere you have been betrayed but listen let me tell you something about betrayal no one who betrays anybody is better than the person he betrayed they will always be behind hear me if they betray jesus they can also betray you but if they could not stop jesus then they cannot stop you remove the stone of betrayal you need friends for one person that betray you there's another person that can bless you don't close the door let them come in and you take those that are useful and remove those that are not useful you cannot live in isolation my dear even though you have been hurt there are people planted to be a blessing give them a chance 
give them a chance. The stone of betrayal. What about the stone of abuse? You have been abused. There are some of you that have been raped by people you respect. Have you ever gone to someone who should help you and the person wants to sleep with you first? Abuse. Have you ever had someone use you and use you and use you and when it's time to settle you, they will tell you there is nothing to give to you or they give you something you don't know. Listen, my friend, in your abuse is your use. Your use will soon come out. Don't worry. This is you. No man has your destiny in his hands. No man is in charge of your destiny. You may be low today, but you're coming up. Don't give up on yourself. Your greatest revenge in life is your success. Your greatest revenge is to become something that they never expected you would be. Your greatest revenge is to stand one day and dash them money and they will collect it and say thank you. You will not go down. Let them abuse. Who was it that was not abused that has become somebody? Don't worry about the abuse. It's just for a while. Take it as part of the process. You won't be there forever. Very soon, God will take you to another place. What about the stone of ingratitude? You give your best and they reject it. Have you ever been in a place where you are walking and another person is taking the glory? You are the person doing all the work and somebody else is shining and claiming it. And you can't say anything. Listen, my friend. Keep doing it. You are increasing your knowledge. You are developing your stamina. You are developing yourself. One day, you will discover that they can't do without you. Then your true value will come out. Listen to me. Don't because of ingratitude, you stop what you are doing. Every work you do, you do for your God and for yourself. Keep doing it. Whether thank you comes or not, keep doing it. One thing is sure, the Bible says, a laborer is worthy of his wages. God owes no man. I see your harvest coming back. I see your reward on the way. Don't give up. What about the stone of disappointment? Have you been disappointed in life? Have you ever been in a situation where you discover that your husband is having an affair somewhere? Have you been in a situation where you discover that the wife you have devoted yourself to is unfaithful? Talks to you anyhow and you feel like you don't have a home. Have you ever been in a situation where you are so disappointed in your parents that you pray and ask God why did you give me such a parent? Have you been disappointed by your children? The people that should bring you honor seem to be bringing you disgrace. The people that should be your support seems to be the people removing the pillar on which you lean. Are you disappointed? Have you ever had friends that you labored for? Turn around. And they cannot help you when you need them. And you are disappointed. Have you come to a point where you look at yourself in this world and you say, I am all alone. I am all alone. Nobody is in this world. Nobody cares for me. I tell you today, somebody cares. God cares. No matter what you're going through, God cares. I care. I may not know you, but I care. I care that you can't sleep well. I care that you can't eat well. I care that you seem not to have any help around you. How I wish I can help. But I believe that my prayer will go a long way for you today. Don't be disappointed. Refuse to go down. It's just a phase and it will pass. No matter how dark the night is, it will not stop the morning sun from rising. Don't die in your night. Be there when the sun will rise again. I see you rising. Weeping may endure for the night. But joy will surely come in the morning. But you have to be there in the morning when the joy will come. Have you been disappointed? The load is getting heavier. The back is heavier with all these stones. 
excess luggages. You don't have anywhere to go and drop it. Hear me today. I am speaking to you. Don't be disappointed. Don't be disappointed. What about the stone of discouragement? You are discouraged. You are tired of life. You are, what will you do? You just, if you can take your life, you would have taken it. You may be even be considering suicide. You may be considering running away. You may be considering doing something drastic. Listen to me now. Cool down. Let peace come into your mind. I speak peace to your heart. Do not be discouraged. The person you served has refused to settle you. The person you helped is the person telling you you can't go anywhere. Are you discouraged? You have given your best and it looks like it is nothing. What is that thing that is making you lose sleep? The debt you are owing. The school fees. The house rent. Is it that this terrorist that is your manager in the office will not let you be? You have been out of school and you can't get a job. It's like you are all alone. Nothing can you can do again. The people that you go to help you want to sleep with you. They want you to bring this or bring that. Is it that in the bank, the target they have given to you is so much that you don't know how you can meet it without compromising? What is that thing that is facing you? Is it this sickness that is sapping the money from you and your family? Is it this infirmity? Are you sick and you are listening to this message? There's a healing coming into your body now. Believe what I am saying. The balm of Gilead is flowing to your side right now. Whether you're in hospital or in a car, whether you're in your shop or in your office, there's a healing coming to you now. Don't be discouraged. Rise. Rise. There's a healing right now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. What is that thing taking your sleep, taking your appetite? Those you owe will not let you sleep. Your phone rings and your heart will skip. I speak peace. Do not be discouraged. God is on the throne. And he is coming for your help. David said, I look up to the hills from whence comes my help. Said my help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. He will not allow you to go down. It is just for the night. The morning sun will soon rise again. Can I bring you to the stone? The excess luggage of your past mistakes. Your past life. Your past failures. You can't forgive yourself for what happened in your life in the past. You can't forgive yourself for the mess in your life. You were careless. Yes, you have made mistakes. You may have even lived carelessly and recklessly. But the message of God has kept you alive. You didn't die with them. Being alive today is just an opportunity to correct the mistakes of yesterday. If the Son of Man sets you free, you are free indeed. All you need is to ask for mercy. All you need to do is to come with, to Him with repentance and say, God, I am not going back to this kind of life again. I want to serve you. God is not interested in your past. He's interested in the decision you take today. Now is the day of salvation. Do not neglect it. You are not a dog. Don't go back to your vomit. But you must forgive yourself. The forgiveness of God will not work in your life until you forgive yourself. You must accept that the forgiveness of God works for you. For he will throw it into the ocean of forgetfulness. His blood wipes out and does not remember. Don't be haunted by your past. Listen, refuse guilt from taking over your life. The devil cannot rule you with your past. I see a new day before you. Forget about yesterday and start now. Change now. Do something positive now. I don't know where you're going on this journey now, but you can take a step from here and decide the past will not repeat itself. You are better than this. You are better than this. 
Yes, you may have been involved in all manner of mess. Is it abortion? Is it occultism? Is it masturbation? Is it homosexuality? Is it stealing? Is it adultery? Is it fornication? Is it fraud? Is it lies? Gossip? No matter the kind of mess in your life, God can give you a message from it. Tomorrow we'll turn it into a message and you will help others with your story. Offload the excess luggage. What about this tone of inferiority complex? You look at your mates and it looks like you are not fit. You look at people and you feel, ah, I can't compare with them. Some girls ask themselves, why am I short? Why am I fat like this? What is wrong with me? Somebody met me somewhere and said, if you don't tell me something useful, I have made up my mind to kill myself. I said, my dear sister, what is wrong with you? She looked at me and said, pastor, look at me. I don't have breasts. Why my mates are wearing bra, I wear singlet. Can a man marry me like this? And I said, yes. God designed you to be somebody's desire. That you must accept yourself. That your shirt doesn't mean anything. You don't need a bowler to increase your height. No. No. You're a masterpiece. Accept yourself the way you are. You don't need to change your color. You don't need to bleach. Sometimes people make up and look like masquerades. Accept yourself first as you are. Every other thing can come. But you must accept yourself. God made you complete. Listen. I don't know the thing that you look at in your system and on your body. And you say, oh no, God, why this? Listen to me. God didn't make a mistake. You are better than what people can see. This is just the container. The true value is the content. My friend, rise up. You can do that thing. You can preach. You can sing. You can act that drama. You can, you can do that thing that they are telling you you cannot. Who, who should tell you that you cannot? Rise, my friend, and equip yourself. Develop yourself. Move forward. I see your star shining. I see you getting to the next level. I see you overtaking those in front of you. You are better than this. No man should write you off. No man should judge you. What about the offense? What about the stone? Of spiritual affliction. Everywhere you go it's like you're haunted. Witches here and there. Wizards here and there. Prophets even tell you somebody is sitting on you listen to me they may be true they may be false but i only believe the word of god if god be for us who can be against us for greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world hear me he said in the world you will have tribulations and trials but rejoice because i have overcome my beloved listen i don't know where the attack is coming from but as i speak to you now i intercept every arrow in your life, in your business, in your marriage, in your health. I return it to the sender. It is written, they shall eat of their own flesh. They shall drink of their own blood. He that digs a pit will fall inside it. Right now, in the spirit I manifest in your lineage, I manifest in your family. I return that arrow back to where it's coming from. Let that altar catch fire right now. In the name of Jesus, I set you free. I lift you up. What are you carrying? I will talk about the last stone that people are carrying. That is the stone I call offense against God. You're asking God, why me? God, why me? God, why me? Why will my child die? God, why will I lose my job? God, why will I not get a job when all my mates have entered school? Why will not I not get that admission? God, why? With all the prayers, with all the seed I have sown, God, why? Why me? Why me? Why will my husband die? Why will my wife die? Why will my father die? Why will my mother die? Why would they take away my land? Why would they do this and do that? God, why me? What have I done wrong? The same question that John the Baptist asked. Are you Jesus, the one I preached about? Are you the Messiah that I preached about? 
His problems made him forget that even in his presence, heaven opened and said, this is my beloved son. And he asked a question. Are you still the person I preached about? And Jesus said, go and tell him. The lame are walking. The blind are seeing. Blessed is he that is not offended in me. Listen, let me tell you something. Your experience is somebody's direction tomorrow. Just hold on and go through it. As I round up this message, I ask, what is your problem? Your heart is full. Your heart is full. And today, I bring you this message as I round up. Elisha took the vessel, he took the container and went back to the spring of water where it began and he poured salt and the container there. And the Bible says the waters were healed unto this day. I bring you back to the altar of God where your life began. I bring you back to the place where life flows from. I bring you back to the altar of God. Hear me today. I bring you one word as it's written in the Bible. Isaiah 43, 18 to 19. Forget the former things. Consider not the things of old. Behold. Behold means see. You need to see it before it comes. I am doing a new thing. He said rivers will come out of your desert. Hey, I can't wait to hear your testimony. Hold on. The sun is about to rise again. What is it that is making you lose your sleep? What is it that is making you lose your appetite? Refuse to die. Refuse to go anywhere. It is only for a season. The night is about to end. Darkness is about to disappear. Hear me. Can I just sing you a little song? Oh my God. Thank you, Jesus. I found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. In sorrows, he's my comfort. In trouble, he's my stay. He tells me every care on him to roll. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. God promised a savior to the sinful world in the form of man he sent the savior to come Jesus is the savior Emmanuel is he yes the power of God is just the same today He's with me all day. He's with me all time. He's my loving friend, my savior all the time. He's with me all day. He's with me all time. He's my loving friend, my savior all the time. Monaya no bochi dum, eh, Monaya no ge dum. Obu ezienim, onyen zopo tam, we do. Monaya no bochi dum, eh, Monaya no ge dum. Obu ezienim, onyen zopo tam, we do. He's with me all day. He's with you all time. He's your loving friend. 
your Savior all the time. He's with you all day. He's with you all time. He's your loving friend, your Savior all the time. Can you just put your right hand on your chest as I pray for you? Father, I speak peace. Everyone listening to the sound of my voice, wherever you are, I release the peace of God which passeth all understanding. Let light come back to your dark corners. I speak light, I speak life. Let the resurrection power manifest in that family, in that business. Let it manifest in your health. I speak to your mountain, who are thou, O mountain, before Zerubbabel? It's not by power. It is not by mind. It's by my spirit. I release the spirit of God in your direction. Peace. Be still. Refuse to be depressed. Refuse to be angry. I speak peace in the name of Jesus. Forgive. Just forgive. All that they have done, just forgive. David told his brothers, You meant it for bad. But God prepared me to deliver you and to help you and God meant it for good. Give up the past. Let go and let God. You will smile again. Just let go. Just let go. As if it didn't happen. Just let go. Offload that luggage. Bring it to the cross. Drop it there. As you hear this message, you are living with a new heart. You're living with a new mind. When you see those who have hurt you, you will greet them with smile and laughter. It is well with you. I will hear your testimony. If you want to reach me, my name is Pastor Don Odunze Jr. of the Family Circle Ministries in Nugu, Nigeria. Look on the sheet or on the cover of this CD, you will get our mailing address. Either the email, or the phone numbers i believe you have a word to send across your healing is here your miracle is here look for some other messages that i have preached they will be a blessing to you as god lives in your heart be a blessing to us we are doing god's work and we believe god that you will never go down i will wait to hear your testimony your healing is here rise get dressed move out you are healed. That enemy that was waiting like for you, like Esau waiting for Jacob, is about to hug you. Receive peace in your heart. You will not go down. I see you smiling again. Thank you for listening. Buy this tape. Give to somebody to listen. Listen to it over again. He is with you all day. Even when the world leaves you, he will remain with you. You are not alone. God bless you.